Hello everyone, this is Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Today we're on the 16th of January, 2024. Today we have around the table Mark Waite, no Ken Salamo, I'm afraid, no Hervé yet, he will maybe join later on. Kevin Martins, thanks for being here. And myself, Bruno Verstein. Uh, we don't have a very big agenda today. We have, as always, open action items. We'll talk a little bit about Java 21. We we'll talk about the um, uh, release work on the agent and controller images, and then the work in progress uh, on images, which has been done recently. We we'll maybe talk about Jenkins artifactory boundaries reduction if there is any news, and we'll talk about briefly uh, Docker-based quick start tutorials. Anything else, uh, Kevin or Mark, that you would like to add to the agenda? Uh, yeah, actually, so. Uh... Possible a question about how to handle operating system updates uh, to the to Jenkins core, and the example is I just submitted a pull request that was merged for two point four forty one, but I realized we probably have to do something like that about every six months, just to be sure that we keep that thing fresh enough for our users. Um, so it's a it's a a question for us as a SIG. Do we want a reminder? Do we want to put it on our agenda every every so often, et cetera? That kind of question. And it'll mm -hmm. wait till the end of the meeting just fine. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, so first of all, the uh, usual suspect, uh, pollution Docker container. I don't think there is any news around this. Uh, we still have to communicate its deprecation in one way or another. I think I can remember that at the end of last year, I can't remember if it was Damien or Eve or somebody else. Um, it was written in another place. I can't remember where, unfortunately, but we have progressed a little bit about the announcement of the deprecation of the Blue Ocean Docker container. Maybe I'm the only one remembering that thing, or maybe I even invented it during my sleep. Nope. Uh, that's it. No, you don't know about that either. Okay. It is. It is not. It is not illusionary. It is not. Oh. Uh, it, the, there really is a Blue Ocean Docker container, and we do want to deprecate it, but low priority. The actual use of the thing is is not a worry for me right now. Mm -hmm. yep. So it, it's, yes, it exists. And yes, uh, I think much more valuable, and I assume we'll get to it when we talk about released work on agent images, has been Hervé Lemaire's work to unify oh, yes. two repositories into one. So That's why uh, in the introduction, I was hoping that Hervé would come uh, later on to talk about his major achievement uh, which has been merged last week or this week i mean but we'll talk about that later on hopefully with Hervé, we'll see mm -hmm. um then kevin uh there was something on you you were supposed to check for python and alpine interaction in the tutorials but the tutorials as it is now is kind of deprecated or not so good to follow so i don't know if you even took some time to review that or if you're waiting for the new version of the python tutorial to appear yeah so um uh mark and i actually took a look at this we went through the documentation for jenkins.io to find um, the specific interaction between Python, Python and Alpine this is referring to um, and didn't find any instances where it was interacting uh, exactly the way it was laid out and didn't find any instances even in the tutorial where it was in, uh, providing that in, that sort of, that exact instruction. Um, so nothing um, nothing to change or update in terms of the documentation for that. Thankfully, um, it seems like it was pretty much what that interact or um, I can't speak to the interaction that Damien was worried about and fixing, but um, yeah, we didn't see anything that we needed to flag or change in the docs. Uh, that's a good thing. And earlier today, I retried my draft pull request about the Python tutorial. And I was wondering because I just didn't remember beforehand when we talked about that uh, two weeks ago, uh, if there was anything to do to change in the existing tutorial regarding the latest versions of Python, you know, the need to have a virtual environment and so on. So I couldn't remember if it was in the sample app or in the tutorial or in the Docker image within the quick start tutorial repository. 
but I find out uh, today. So now I know it's just in the Docker image. So that won't need any effort from the newcomer, the end user, whatever. It's deep inside the Docker images, which is in the quick start tutorial. So we're all good to go regarding that. Um, any comment or question about that subject? No, okay, thank you. Now, Java 21 support, two plus two plus two Java support plan. Uh, I had a look earlier today and um, your Jenkins enhancement proposal hasn't moved a lot uh, lately, hasn't Mark. Hasn't moved it... at all. And I've got lots okay. to do on it. <laughs> There's been no progress and shamefully no progress for a month or more. But it's all on you, I guess, or do we still have to discuss with the rest of the community? Well, what what we need is there's there's lots of discussion wow. needed with the rest of the community, but I'm the catalyst for that. Uh, we will probably discuss some of it at the Jenkins Contributor Summit in Foster. Oh yeah, uh, because the the challenge is we need to describe the steps to take to stop supporting a, J a Java version, which is what will happen mm -hmm. on October 2024, and we need to describe the more recent steps that we took to add a new Java version, which we did with Java 21. So each of those needs more detail and will help. Yeah. Got it. Thank you, Mark. Um, I know there are still some stale PRs waiting to be reviewed or merged. I think in my... Uh, I had a, a table somewhere, a sheet where I wrote, we wrote down all the 250 plugins that were to be updated with Java 21. I think a few of them are still in the right white color, so they are not green, so they haven't been merged. But I don't know if they are, if they will be merged uh, one of these days. I know you pinged, you knocked on the door, or quite a few plugin maintainers recently, and this has proved useful and successful because I. So I think three merge requests, um, pull requests merged last week or so. So it's still working, but I guess there are also other repos that won't get merged until whenever they get right. merged. Right. So so the, it highlights that the technique has worked. What I did was yeah. I looked at the plugin, res looked at the plugin GitHub repository, looked up the specific maintainers of that plugin in the repository permissions updater and then mentioned them with an at mention in the comment hey would you be willing to do this because sometimes these maintainers have turned off notifications of pull requests for their repositories because they have so many whereas they yep. typically have not turned off notifications if they are explicitly mentioned so as an example, I've still got on the Java 21 pull requests that I submitted, I've still got three open. Three, there are three pull requests that I have open that I've sent reminders, I've done the various things and nope, no progress. So it's going to happen. Some subset of them <laughs> won't, won't be merged. I haven't attempted to find out how many of your pull requests haven't been processed yet, Bruno. You can easily see it from the github.com polls page. Oh, really? Okay. Um, let's go. Oh, if you don't okay. mind. No, that'd be great. Yeah. So if you go to github.com slash polls, you'll have to be logged in as you, but hopefully you're, if you're already logged in, what we'll see is is the list, the status of your pull requests. Okay, so is open, is PR, author, Gunta, yes, good. Uh, archive false, yeah, great. And can I filter for Jenkins CI and you, you, plugin, maybe? You could, or in this case, I would think you just want to filter for Java. Just put the word Java, Java or JDK, oh, yeah, of course. right? Yeah. So here we've got post build script, parameterized scheduler, extensible. So it looks like you've got, keep scrolling downward. Maybe you, you've got 10 or 20. Wow. <laughs> okay. Quite yeah, a lot. So, well, but, but Wait. here again, this, this may argue for the, and as uh, several of those I, I sent, I, several of those I've done reminders on. I don't know that I've done reminders on all of them, but. Oh, and actually any one of them that has an, a red X by it, 
if you want to just ping me separately, I can make sure yeah. that it, it gets you. to rebuilt. replay the, exactly, yeah, the pipeline with the right Jenkins file. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, okay, let me write that down before I forget. Uh, a few uh, still waiting. A, a few, many, and many ah, is okay. Yeah. Okay, don't be modest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> many are still waiting, awaiting merge because we've not received the yeah. because the plugin maintainer hasn't merged them uh yep technique is that even a word in english and you know we'll get in touch with mark to replay the failed pipeline yeah sorry about that but right. uh, no, that's just, okay. it's easy to do if we just know the list but i can't generate the, your the list of your pull requests directly myself as far as i can tell yeah i'm gonna play with that thanks a lot for proposing mark that will help uh making the thing progressing whatever oh, no, wait a second cool. maybe i can oh really yeah okay. because it's it's got a clear a clear author colon thing, and yes, I can. I don't need you to give me any list. I got really? it. Ooh. So how did you do that? Oh, well, in that, on the github.com page. Okay, there is, okay. Up at the top, there's a select condition, which says author colon you. I change it, my, when I do it, it comes up author colon me. I changed it to author colon you, and, yep. and it just satisfied it it works so i can see it that's great nice cool thank you mark uh now uh for the release work on agent and controller images these are this has restarted because there was a pause at the end of last year so as for the controller we only had one version oh maybe two now uh because i guess during just before this meeting this has been rebuilt so maybe we have the 244 oh no not yet maybe with the tags yeah so oh yeah it's a manual operation and somebody has to do that mark you uh taught me that two weeks ago <laughs> so the tag is this but the release is not yet available oh wait wait um, a sec which hold on hold on which release so 2441 it definitely not... is released Oh, oh, okay. on on the Docker container. You're right. I missed it again. Thank you for for reminding. Because the, Not Jenkins, the robots, Mark, <laughs> the Jenkins core release is 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 correctly recorded, yeah. but the release on on the Docker contain on the Docker repository is not. I'll get that done. Thank you for reminding. Uh, thank you for doing that, Mark. Um. So of course the two four four. Oh, I uh, didn't see much uh, change except move to the weekly 2440. But there was one um, work in progress that got merged, which is the improved logging for common failure when using default config. Um, I don't know if it, he, this person is a first time contributor, but he found a problem um, regarding the um, rights, the permissions on the repo when starting the Docker. Uh, image and he decided to make a pull request to solve that. There was quite a lot of discussion, but finally it made it into the main branch and has been merged. So thanks a lot, Clinton Steiner, uh, for this work that will definitely help newcomers uh, when it comes to Jenkins. And there was only there was another uh, thing, despite um, just changing the weekly version. It's only run GitHub action from Jenkins CI repository. So that won't change the life of uh, end users, but for uh, develop developers, uh, maintainers, contributors, that will help because we were getting quite a lot of emails saying, oh, this uh, GitHub action doesn't work on your fork. I know I can do anything about that. So now we won't get, the, hopefully, we won't get the, this kind of emails anymore. Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, when there is an, an annoying noise, uh, um, sometimes, oh, it's annoying, it's annoying. And then after a while, you even don't um, 
uh, realize that the noise has gone. And I think that will be the same for the emails. They were kind of annoying and now that they're gone, I almost forgot about them. That's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was a work or a proposal from, uh, not my fault, Alexander Brandes, if I'm not mistaken. And right. that's a good thing. I, I think you will appreciate that also, Mark. <laughs> it will decrease slightly the number of emails you get per day. Uh, now for Docker Agent, we had a few version bumps and of course a big merge uh, from Heavy that led to four new releases. Um, so we had um, the Jenkins remoting version of code that got uh, upgraded. We bumped Arc Linux to the newest version from 2024. We uh, upgraded update CLI to 2.5.2.0. That won't change anything for the end user. That just for the uh, the update of the the repo. But the most interesting to me is that the um, work from Hervé who wanted to build both agent and inbound agent uh, in the same repo because that the pain in the neck, frankly, to keep everything up to date, uh, it's not beautiful. Uh, so now it works uh, after more than one month. Um, it has made it into a release, so the last release. Thanks a lot, Hervé, for the great work. Uh, we have been talking about that for months, frankly. So I'm super happy that this is finally happening. And there are next steps, some more important than others. All of them are listed there. The first one that Hervé talked about in Gitter today was, let's find a new name for the repo. And I haven't been able to find a nice one. So if you ever have an ID, um, it's in Gitter in the channel Docker, uh, Jenkins Docker. So feel free to um, share your ideas there. Uh, it will make Heavy happy. And us too. Um, any common question about this one? Okay, thank you. Now for Inboot Agent. Uh, which is bound to disappear, I'm afraid. There were a few version bumps that led to three new releases. So of course we bumped the parent Jenkins agent version. We also bumped update CLI. And I think that Hervé will build, I don't know how to call that, not an empty or blank or white or whatever release that is the same version of the agent and input agent, uh, but within the new repo. So I don't know if any of you know more about that. I would have loved to have Hervé's insight about that. But yeah, we was... yes, Mark. No, I th I okay. think his I think his plan is to do a tombstone release. Um, That's what and... I was looking for. Thanks a lot. Right, <laughs> and and then 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 continue. And as far as he and I discussed it earlier today, and it's it looks like it's going very very well. The the combination. Previously, we had three repositories that were worrying about how to create a Jenkins agent. We're now down to two with inbound and agent combined together. Very nice. Yep. Thank you, Mark. And now for SSH agent, nothing uh, groundbreaking. Uh, it's just the update of Debian bookworm to the latest version, not the latest version, by the way, uh, 2023, 12 to 18. So I'm sure there is another one because I merged quite a few pull requests today about that. So I guess it will make its way into the next release of SSH agent. There is nothing really changing, uh, nothing important for us really changing in the latest versions of Bookworm. So uh, the work in progress on images has shrinked down because Hervé got his um, PR merged. And the PR we talked about earlier, which was about um, getting a, a better logging for common failure has also been merged. So we still have on the work in progress, the use Docker Compose to publish images that relates to Windows because we used to work with something called PS1, uh, PowerShell, I guess, a script. And now, uh, thanks to the work of Hervé, we're targeting the use of Docker Compose instead of this cryptic, at least to me, uh, <laughs> PowerShell script. Mm -hmm. And then Hervé again, uh, uh, controller adapt update to GDK 11 and 17 to Windows, um, because for the time being, it's not yet handled for Windows or badly handled. I just can't remember. Mark, is there any news regarding the Jenkins artifactory boundaries or are we satisfied with the way it worked until now? 
As far as I can tell, we are satisfied with how it's worked. We've successfully reduced the bandwidth requirements and seen that the bandwidth usage went down based on log file analysis. And, and we did some final uh, configuration tuning to remove some debris from a repository we affectionately call the orphans repository. So the orphans <laughs> repository is a place where we had put binaries that were not available from any other location mm -hmm. Uh, except from things that were cloning the entirety of uh, of the Apache Maven Central. Yep. We don't want to present to the public internet a copy of Apache Maven Central. That's a really bad thing to do. It increases our bandwidth use dramatically. Therefore, we've got this these relatively few files that we keep there, uh, the one that's the most noteworthy is called JB Crypt. It's a 2015 implementation of the OpenBSD um, crypto library yeah. in Java. And thankfully, a user submitted a pull request to switch from that 2015 version to a 2021 version that is the exact same Java source code, just delivered by somebody into a public location. Hmm. So that's not Apache Maven Central. Yeah. So we're cool. very pleased. Nice. Thank you, Mark. Uh, now, Docker-based quick start tutorials. So it's a thing in several steps. We have a new repo in Jenkins Docs uh, aiming to help with um, uh, existing tutorials uh, regarding Maven, Python, um, multi-branch pipelines, and so on. We have a revamp on the Jenkins IO website of these tutorials um, using this uh, repo I just cited. And the Maven uh, one has been merged today, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin, that's right? That's correct. Maven's already merged. And uh, yeah, it should be appearing today later if it's not already. That's super cool. Thanks a lot for taking the time, uh, Mark and Kevin, to review. Thanks also to Alexander Bandes um, for reviewing this PR. It's far from perfect, but it's much better than the previous um, documentation, the previous tutorial. So I'm really happy with that. I switched the Python one from draft to reviewable today. It's maybe um, a lower quality than the Maven one, my fault. I should maybe spend a little more time on polishing uh, that tutorial. We'll see where this goes. Um, I retried today the Python tutorial, as I said, maybe in the beginning of the meeting, and it worked for me. Uh, the main differences are in the Docker file uh, because we have to create a virtual environment. Uh, it's a requirement for the from bookworm up to uh, yeah in the future we will have to use that and it's cleaner and it's not using python too um i also saw somebody today can't remember if it was on Gitter or on community jenkins io saying that oh no it was on github uh, because there is an issue on the um, tutorial, you know, the sample tutorial in Python, somebody created an issue thing, oh, that doesn't work anymore. It's failing on the test part, on the test stage. So I just referred them to the preview of the new version um, of the Python tutorial, and hopefully that will work for them. At least it works for me. So whenever you have time, feel free to try that new tutorial and point the issues you're having, or maybe it will work, <laughs> you never know works for me uh you know with docker we're supposed to get rid of that it works on my machine it's supposed to work just about everywhere <laughs> we'll see that fingers crossed um any common question about that before we go to the next subject no no, no questions for... hardy congratulations major victory the maven tutorial being done is the first of multiple steps my hope is we eventually get to the point where the awful ugly horrible <laughs> instructions in our docker <laughs> install guide are replaced with a very simple clone this repository docker compose up i would love to it will take some time but i would love of to course. participate in that and once again thanks a lot to 
uh, Ashutosh, thanks enough for uh, working last summer with us uh, in order to make this possible. To Jean-Marc Messen and to, I always forgot his name. You know who you are, <laughs> the other commenter. Um, sorry about that. And of course, to Google for um, making this possible. That was a great thing. We see now um, why this is a success and it's really good to see. Thanks, Mark. So Mark, you wanted to tell us about uh, operating system updates to Jenkins Core. Would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, so maybe maybe let's open let's open the pull request and talk about why it happened. So uh, github.com slash Jenkins CI slash Jenkins. <clears throat> or or even better. No, no, even better. Even better. Go to Jenkins.io and the download page. We're going to use the change log, aren't we, Kevin? <laughs> because Kevin's merged the change log. So click the download button. On the okay. weekly side, regular releases change log. Okay, update operating system end of life data for Amazon Linux, Alpine Linux. Yeah, so click that pull request link. Yeah, I saw that one. Okay, so what this was is, and and Daniel Beck asked the question. He said, "Mark, whatever motivated you to do this? We're going to have to maintain <laughs> it forever." Right. We're going to have to update this. And he's right in the sense that we need to if if we want to tell people that their operating system is becoming and reaching end of life, we have to have an updated list somewhere that mm -hmm. says when your operating system reaches its end of life. So Daniel's comment is exactly correct. He's right. This requires updates. So so what what the question oh. was is what led me to discover it and and you can ignore the specific details i actually wanted the screenshot so back to the yes sorry but i, I just i didn't think it was that um not complicated but that it's okay and, oh and and it's not some of that some of that was polishing so some oh. of the, some of the ch the differences you saw there are pure polish and and admittedly amazon linux created has a has a complication that this particular code had never seen before one operating system is a sub pure substring of another operating system uh -huh. <laughs> and it was but, doing doing things that made that not not happy so okay but the the crucial the crucial things that led to this first someone asked a question on community.jenkins.io uh mm -hmm. why doesn't accept new work with the git client plugin it fails with this message that accept new is not implemented except new <laughs> is a feature of modern ssh versions but centos 7 red hat enterprise linux 7 and its derivatives do not deliver a modern ssh they deliver ssh 7.4 whereas 9. something is the current release oh so the, the the open ssh people regularly release new versions roughly quarterly and 7.4 is a long time ago mm -hmm. so while researching that i realized oh i'd never told people that amazon linux 2 is in fact a red hat derivative but it is it very clearly is I didn't a red know hat that. 7 okay. derivative See, me neither but looking at it it is clearly a red and they say so in their documentation that it's a red hat 7 derivative so okay so the that's answer not the thing is, they are ashamed of Okay. No, no, no. In fact, and, and their users and their users like it. Like many Red Hat okay. Seven users, they like that it's very stable, very, very stable. So, so the the catalyst was Red Hat Enterprise Linux Seven is dead, but this never told the user of Amazon Linux Two that it was dead, oh, and yes. and therefore that was a gap. So mm -hmm. I wanted to add Amazon Linux 2. While I was adding Amazon Linux 2, I looked at the list and realized, oh, I forgot to add Alpine Linux 3.19 when it released. I forgot to add Amazon Linux 2023, and I had forgotten to add Fedora 39. <laughs> it's like, oh, there were a lot of forgots in this, in this story. So, so the idea was, okay, let's fix some of those forgots and... And then, then looking, it was, oh, and by the way, there's test data that's missing that wasn't covering all the things that it was saying it would. So those are all added. But the, the, the question for us as a group is, how do we deal with this 
for ourselves, because I think it's a platform SIG thing, right, to do this. Should we put a reminder for ourselves every six months that says revisit this list or every three months or whatever? Uh, yeah, I get it. Uh, in fact, I don't know if that translates uh, in anything in English, but it looks for me like the CZIF, CZIF, CZIFs. You know, the guy who gets his stomach eaten uh, each and every day and then it grows back and the next day it's again. Um, I, I was not expecting a reference to Greek mythology and the guy, or no, no, is that is that um, is that from Dante's Inferno? So Sisyphus is the guy who pushes Sisyphus. the stone up the hill and then it yeah, rolls it's another back thing, down but over the it's top. It rolls him, right? back. Exactly. Yeah, I, I yes. got it wrong, but no, it's no. the same kind of pain. <laughs> right, right. So the, understood. Yes, th this is that this is a a task that needs to be repeated. And yes rolling stones uphill might be considered a metaphor for that right yeah but the thing is uh we have to know when to do that and we maybe have to find another way or a more pleasant way to do that because it doesn't look like fun of course you did some polishing uh cleaning and so on but 14 files change for four new uh data that seems like a lot of changes uh doesn't look like fun i don't know what is your process your workflow whatever but Wow. Um, well, and actually, that the, cool. the, the the reason for the 14 files was because of the gaps in test data, right? That was because the original implementation was flawed. So the oh. large number of files here, in terms of actual number of files that will happen in the future, it will probably correspond much more to one file for Amazon Linux 3.20, uh, one file for Fedora 40, those kind yeah. of things. So relatively smaller. This one happened to be large because I discovered a bunch of mistakes. But it's not as simple as declaring something new in a JSON, XML, or uh, Actually, CSV it, file. It, it is almost almost that simple. Okay. So, but um, but it, it's I'm confident it's something that you would be comfortable doing. Uh, having <laughs> I was expecting that. <laughs> look 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 at my pattern that that I used. Something that I can do. Something I think most anybody could do. We we could probably even automate it because end of life end of life date the end of life dot date website has a REST API that they provide this yes. data. So, That's so conceptually, where we you. could we could automate this if we wanted. It just feels like a lot of work to automate something that's only going to be touched I, every six yes, months or 12 months. I don't months. know if we should go up to the uh, complete automation, but I was wondering if we couldn't get, uh, you know, um, not a, uh, a dummy uh, pull request that wouldn't do anything except alert us that there is a new data to in to import into that, not doing the whole work and create the code and so on, but just a uh, pull request saying, hey, you know, they're all in email or something. Let's say there is something new, um, an operating system just got end of life, uh, something like that, so that we know that we have to do something. Uh, yes, I was thinking, of course, of automation. Having something in the calendar is okay uh, because the process could fail, um, but I'd like to have a look at how to, uh, automate that in a way or another. Uh, what do you think of that, Kevin? I mean, yes, I do, uh, ideally automating it would be the way to go. That way it saves everyone the trouble and concern later on down the line. But um, if it's as easy as it seems, I mean, I'd even be okay helping in whatever way. Um, it seem, like It doesn't seem very far off from like what the update CLI uh, ultimately does. So um, yeah. Cool. Uh, so, uh, Mark, we could always add something in the Jenkins calendar uh, for us to prepare before that kind of meeting, you know, maybe on a Monday or whatever, so that on the next Tuesday, we know if there is something uh, to discuss that a mm -hmm. new, yeah. an old operating system uh, reaching end of life. Um, and then maybe I should try to automate something uh, and see where this goes if you're not against it. Yeah, I, I think I actually am against it just because I, I don't, I think there are other things I'd rather have you automate much more than this documentation things and other, other okay. places Got that, it. No that are much more. This for me is is an every six months or every 12 months little yeah. side trip. So it, I don't think it's worth. With us, calendar will do this. then. 
Well, and, and even I'm even fine if we just put it on our agenda and agenda and remind ourselves every so often. Yeah. The Jenkins calendar would be fine as well because the the infrastructure team certainly uses the Jenkins calendar for their reminders. Yeah. In the... Cool. Thank you, Mark. Um, um, thank you, Kevin. Anything else you'd like to discuss about? No. Okay. So let's wrap it up. Thanks a lot for being here. The recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours, hopefully. And I would say uh, see you in 15 days, two weeks from now. But I don't know if we'll be back from uh, FOSDEM. Uh, when will it be? No, we, we should we should be. Oh, we we won't be gone yet. <laughs> right. So, and I don't I don't fly out until first the maybe Thursday the first, right? And I think Kevin flies the first as well. So I think we'll be here in two weeks. Oh, cool! Thanks. So see you two weeks from now. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.